morning. So, we continue our uh, minimum maximum principle as I said we will be proving just one result and that is all in the setup of this one. So, we are going to uh, write for the Neumann case similar no Dirichlet case and such similar results uh, there are results you can look into many other PDE books like Gilbert Trodinger and many other books we do that one. So, uh, maximum principle or minimum principle for weak solutions. Okay. Okay. So, you assume a ij is elliptic this we are assumed. So, we are writing it uh, assume a j is elliptic okay. and uh, the minimum thing. So, uh, uh, assume you always need that a naught l infinity and a naught of x greater than or equal to 0. So, so, write weak maximum principle. Okay. Let omega bounded open smooth whatever smoothness you need according to the requirement. Okay. Smooth and f is in L 2 of omega and u belongs to h 1 of omega intersection c omega bar satisfies uh, integral of a j of x d u by d x j d v by d x i plus integral of a naught of x u v this is in omega this is in omega is equal to integral of f of v for all v in h 1 naught of omega. Then 1 f greater than or equal to 0 in omega u greater than or equal to 0 on gamma that is a boundary implies u greater than or equal to 0 in omega 2 that is a 1 is the one only you want to prove if a not equal to 0 f greater than or equal to 0 that implies yeah, yeah, in great implies uh, u greater than or equal to 0, greater than or equal to infimum of u over gamma in omega. So, let me write that one and 3 further if a not equal to 0 f equal to 0 implies infimum of u over gamma less than or equal to u of x less than or equal to supremum of u over gamma. Okay. This is true for all x and omega. Okay. So, let me give you a proof of this. Is that clear? So, this is the one the rest are all deductions. So, this is the only one you have to prove it about the weak maximum principles. Okay. So, these conditions f and the thing uh, u on the boundary gives you u greater than or equal to 0. So, the proof we recall one of the results uh, which we have simple results you are study 
if u omega smooth of course you are assuming u is in h1 of omega we have derived that uh, u mod u u plus u minus in h1 of omega okay so you have recall that results so one the proof if u greater than or equal to 0 on gamma that implies u equal to mod u uh, on gamma so and that implies you are u minus there is no water u minus is in h1 not of omega that is the thing you can conclude because there is nothing the by trace u minus will be on h1 not of omega. So, therefore, that implies in the weak formulation weak formulation where is the weak formulation? This is the weak formulation. Weak formulation star you can take V to be u minus can take V equal to u minus and u minus and u plus have u minus u plus essentially in the sense that we have disjoint support ok essentially have disjoint support in the sense that if at all they coincide it will coincide only on a set of measure 0 essentially have disjoint supports. So, that implies in the weak formulation uh, because you also recall u is equal to u plus minus u minus use that. So, the u minus part will go and you will get a i j into u plus part will go because it has a disjoint support this d u minus by d x j. Here you have to write u plus minus u minus that is a sign coming here and u plus part will go because of uh, here I am taking v equal to u minus which is allowed because it has that one minus integral of a naught of u minus whole square equal to integral of f u minus okay that of course is greater than equal to 0 u minus s is always positive so you have this one okay now use ellipticity so that it, it exactly meaning you reverse that one integral of a i j this is d, let, let me use the bet, uh, comfortable notation d i of u minus plus integral of a naught of u minus square is less than or equal to 0. So, uh, so use ellipticity. So, this portion is greater than or equal to alpha into integral of grade u minus square ok and both are positive. So, this immediately implies your u minus equal to 0 almost everywhere and that implies you are u equal to u plus which is greater than or equal to 0 almost everywhere. So, the proof is just kicking realizing this fact nothing more than that on that one. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, the two second part is all trivial to if a naught equal to 0 uh, identically 0 
uh, and let m is equal to infimum of u over gamma and then you see you can add a constant that implies if a not identically equal to 0 you put let is equal to m a not identically 0 uh, then you can add a constant because you look at this weak formulation and adding a constant will not change. So, if you use a solution you can add any constants here u that is what you, you will get it. So, that implies u minus m satisfies star star and uh, uh, and u is the infimum and u minus m is greater than or equal to 0 uh, by 1 by the first part ok and that is what uh, uh, exactly you want to prove with the conclusion you see u greater than or equal to 0. So, you apply for that u minus 1 and 3 is for the further if m f equal to 0 as well uh, then minus u also satisfies star also satisfies star ok and hence 3 follow that implies 3 you can apply for minus 3 u that will become the supremum of things to be proved. So, we will uh, discuss uh, another important thing what is called uh, the eigenvalue problem. So, I will begin with this today and then uh, we discuss more tomorrow okay. eigenvalue problem. So, you see so, this is uh, connected with your resolvent etcetera you will be seeing later more details about the resolvent the solvability of that uh, eigenvalue problems you will uh, see a more detailed analysis you will be seeing it in the uh, course when you study evolution equations etcetera. So, we are restricting only to the eigenvalue problem corresponding to Laplacian that is all corresponding. So, these are all various issues uh, regarding just about your second order operator you see and lot of literature here. So, how does a uh, eigenvalue problem looks like? So, you have your operator la minus Laplacian u equal to lambda u. So, that is how you look at recall when you have a matrix A. So, looking uh, the so solubility is about A x equal to B, but uh, so what is the eigenvalue problem? Looking for lambda complex numbers such that A x equal to lambda x and of course, it should be there x is x not equal to 0. So, same thing this is in R analysis and whenever such a lambda is called an eigenvalue and uh, x is called an eigenvector. The problem is that when you go to infinite dimensional setup is not only the eigenvalues which you will find out you will have the so called other spectral values and uh, when you study unbounded operators minus Laplacian is an unbounded operator. When you have an unbounded operator you can have continuous spectrum residual spectrum etcetera and compli uh, complement of all that is what you are resolvent and there is an operator associated. It is not only that you are the it is all uh, thing and you also want to understand the boundedness of this inverse which is not obvious, but in finite dimensional situation uh, you have only eigenvalues. The moment you have an eigenvalue and you know all that you know about the related to its uh, solubility and all of that and a, a inverse the moment you have an a has an inverse whatever it is a lambda has an inverse that immediately it is a matrix and it is automatically bounded linear operator. So, such things are there, but that is not true when you go to infinite dimension. 
So, the infinite dimensional operators which are closest to this finite dimensional version are compact operators and you have a very general uh, uh, spectrum of analysis spectral analysis of compact operators and that you have essentially eigenvalues a possible uh, converging point as 0. So, that is a very general thing in functional analysis. So, look into look functional analysis books on spectral analysis of compact spectral theorem of compact operators theorem of compact operators. Interestingly our Laplacian we call it operator in the sense that we are going to define which you have already seen minus Laplacian inverse is compact you will see that it is essentially solution operator is compact solution operator is invertibility you have to understand all that phenomena ok solution operators operator is compact in appropriate spaces. When you say that so, uh, so uh, this is what you are going to study we will discuss it uh, soon we will have uh, so we will come to that later. So, let me make these remarks uh, which you are doing it. So, when you are solving this equation maybe I will tell uh, so uh, properly in the next page. So, so that is what essentially you have to understand. So, understanding this is a compact and this gives you eventually the, uh, a only eigenvalues and that to a discrete set of eigenvalues that is very crucial. So, you see for a matrix you have an exactly n eigenvalues may be counted up to multiplicity because same eigenvalues can give different eigenvectors, uh, but that is not the case when you go to infinite dimension. There are operators uh, which uh, can uh, have no eigenvalues at all. So, okay. so, so you uh, job is to find the lambda you see I am just replacing your lambda u by f by lambda u, but that is different. So, find the lambda and u of course, uh, lambda is real now uh, real you will prove it because of the self adjoint in general it need not be and your solution will be in h 1 naught. So, you can give a variational formulation. So, but lambda u are unknowns that is what you have to understand ok this is unknowns ok all right. So, let me try to understand this one. Of course, as I said you can one can consider. So, I will uh, you can follow a similar argument one can also consider see as long as the second order operator elliptic with a non negative first order term there is no issue the same procedure can be adapted a j of x d u by d x j plus a naught of u equal to lambda u. So, in omega and u equal to 0 d omega for the simplicity I will work with the Laplacian ok. Here a naught of course, is greater than equal to 0 then only you know that the solution unique solution operator you can define which we have seen it in our weak formulation ok. So, we uh, 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 and you need elliptic a j elliptic you need that as well elliptic you elliptic means we are on only considering uniformly elliptic we are not considering any degenerate equations ok. So, yeah one remark immediately is that if lambda equal to 0 you see it immediately implies. So, I am considering one ok considering Laplacian is true here also considering minus Laplacian only ok that does not matter even if anything. If lambda equal to 0 by uniqueness then it is a problem this one you see minus, then uh, uh, once you fix lambda it is a standard solution operator problem in omega and u equal to 0 
on d omega. So, by uniqueness you uh, identically zero that implies lambda is not an eigenvalue. Uh, so, I did not define if there is uh, something you can do here this lambda is called an eigenvalue if x is eigenvalue and u is called eigenvector corresponding eigenvector. So, same terminology ok if you do that. So, lambda is not an eigenvalue. So, that is immediate you need u non identically 0 not an eigenvalue. Yeah, these are all you know maybe I, I, I am taking for granted of the u not identically 0 you need that then only you call it an eigenvalue okay. that is one point and if lambda not equal to 0 u not identically 0 then lambda is an eigenvalue and corresponding eigenvector. Now, you understand this solution operator you during the study of our uh, Fredholm alternative we have studied this in detail. So, the so let me describe this solution operator. So, let us try to understand that. So, you have your f in L 2 of omega ok. So, let me do this here and then consider Laplacian u equal to f in omega is the problem. So, u equal to 0 on d omega. This is your standard problem, it is not an eigenvalue problem. So, that gives you unique u, I call this to be g of f and this we have seen it. So, what uh, and uh, or uh, let me not use u. So, let me call it w, w equal to g f this is in h 1 naught and what is the weak formulation integral of gradient of g f gradient of v equal to integral of f v. We have discussed this uh, plenty of times. So, you will be com you should be comfortable by now if not what to do? I am sure you will. You should go back if you are not yet uh, comfortable. So, that gives you it is the same procedure we have done it many times. We have done it many times with uh, because that will be repeatedly coming. So, you have a g from L 2 to H 1 naught ok. So, f going to and uh, repeatedly doing it because if you are learning it for the first time you may take time to grasp these ideas ok. So, g of equal to w ok and this is your solution operator, but then I treat it in a different way and the continuity tells you that this operator g is of course, is g is linear continuous. ok and uh, 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 continuity means this is what you are using it now you see your g f in h 1 naught is less than or equal to constant into norm in L 2 of omega very clear. But now you see the embedding embedding that h 1 naught of omega the identity map to L 2 this identity is compact. So, you can view your g as uh, I composition g as a mapping from L 2 to L 2. So, you view the your solution u going uh, f going to f going to w equal to g f 
in as an element in L2 and is compact you know, in this way. So, the solution operator when you view it from L2 to L2 is compact that is what you are really. Okay, so, you have a compact operator. So, this is precisely uh, in symbolically if you look at it probably you may not have seen it symbolically g is your minus Laplacian inverse with that Eigen value problem that is what you have to understand that is what you are getting as compact you see because it is a g. So, this is what you are trying to do it minus Laplace n of u equal to f of course, with condition that is a boundary condition is what added there and u is uh, equal to minus w. w and you have your w is uh, so w is equal to minus with that boundary condition you have to solve that one then only you get well definedness of the uniqueness of that you see so this is a kind of a if you want that is also a symbolic representation and one more uh, quick comment and then I will stop it. Uh, so, I will uh, continue this for uh, so get familiarized before reading the uh, before listening to this lecture thing f and g of l omega we get. So, I will then so first property is about the compactness. So, we get integral of uh, so you take uh, uh, v equal to uh, g g. So, you get that one. So, if you have your grade g f ok. So, grade g f and then you have your grade g v that v to be taken v is in h 1 now tenga. So, take v is equal to g g you can do because it is in h 1 naught. So, when you do that one you get your g g that is nothing but integral of f a g g, but this is symmetric. So, you can reverse the role of f and g. So, you can also by reversing the role of f and g this is also equal to g g f. So, you see you have that one. So, that essentially implies what is f g g is equal to g f f. So, that means f g g this is an L 2 everything you view it as an L 2 is equal to g of g and you get it to be uh, the g is symmetric ok symmetric we call it uh, of course, there will be when you deal with the unbounded operator have that, but here it is everything is perfect uh, and uh, you have G is self adjoint. So, you see. So, what you have is that that in conclusion G is a symmetric compact symmetry immediately tell you your Eigen values will be real symmetric uh, compact symmetric means self adjoint you will have here self adjoint compact operator and you know the spectrum of that one which I will discuss it uh, next time. So, your operator the solution operator which you are defined is in a good shape corresponding to your Laplacian. So, that is what we have so, we continue this one. Now, you know the how the spectrum looks like that and then we give some characterization via Rayleigh quotient all that in the next lecture we will do that. So, we will have couple of lectures in this direction and after that uh, we will be moving on to the evolution equations. So, so far will be all is elliptic equations you will see more 
on the evolution equations. Thank you. Thank you very much.